Well, this all began with a risk. And it started <clears throat> by the second person on there is Dr. Mark Asher, <clears throat> who was a great friend and developed thyroid cancer. And uh, so this led to a study. And so really, what do we know about x-ray? And the x-ray really began in 1895. And <clears throat> it really began with this guy on November 8th when he was playing with the idea of passing electricity through a gas. And when he did this, <clears throat> he, he developed, uh, this was in the winter of his 50th birthday, and he was, and he was in uh, Bavaria when this happened. And what he found is that he had some uh, barium-coated screens that were about nine feet away from this experiment. And then he noticed that they started to fluoresce, and he was working in a dark room. And the question was, what was happening? And this is where he decided there were rays that were escaping. He, he called them X because he didn't know what they were, and that's, it's, that name has stuck ever since. <clears throat> and so the answer is that three days later, before Christmas, he took his wife down to the lab and exposed her hand first. These are the original x-rays taken in 1895 of Martha, who was his wife. And if you, the next later x-rays is the one on the right. You can see the ring on her fingers there. But this was the first x-ray ever reported. So the question was, where do we go from there? Well, it turns out that Thomas Edison picked up on this and had a laboratory <coughs> investigator. That laboratory investigator died of, um, of skin cancer, and he had it all over his body, and he glowed from top to bottom and died. So that was the first fatality that we know of from radiation. And so it's interesting. There's just some major articles here, and I'm going to reference them quickly. But really, in China, a Dr. Uh, Chang recorded 27 thousand medical diagnostic x-ray workers and a second group of 25,000 other medical specialists who did not have radiation. And this was all presented <clears throat> at the Health Physics Society in 2002. And he, uh, be, he looked at this and basically these are different measurements. That's what Jens was referring to you. The NGY or guys was used at that time. And what he found is that the risk for leukemia and solid cancers was much higher in the cohort that used x-ray. So these were huge studies that were developed. And then this was repeated in 2003 uh, on a large study that included Canada. And in this one, they were looking at the risk for thyroid cancer. And thyroid cancer, uh, again, showed a much higher rate in the cohort that was around x-ray. These are x-ray workers now, you know, people who might be in the operating room, might be in taking x-rays and such. And then finally, uh, Dr. Singer reported uh, things now. He's, he's using now this, uh, using the uh, REM, uh, and I'm not going to get into the physics of how they call these different things, but I just want you to know in this short talk that he then came to some safe limits. So basically 5,000 rents for the total body for the whole year was considered safe. Now, there's an interesting part. If you look at the top, the average public gets 300 just from background and you get about 60 from a diagnostic radiology test, so like a chest x-ray. So you can see that you can very quickly move up to the problem of uh, where is safe and where isn't safe. And these are large public health studies. So I think um, this is where you, these are the references that you may want to go to. Now, of course, the one that's quoted the most, of course, is after our our atomic bomb drops in uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And, and 
this again came to this 5,000 RM per year exposure. And, uh, and so we're in this, uh, these numbers are developed. So you, whatever system you use, you need to know what, what is safe, what isn't. So then comes the problem of the C-arm. The C-arm came in and we started to use it as orthopedists and, uh, and other specialties, but mainly orthopedics. And here we were using IM nailing and we were using 4.6 minutes of fluoroscopy per case. And these were receiving uh, an enormous amount of radiation and the, and the thyroids were getting about 15.5, 15.3 and the index fingers were about 27. So this is where the studies came. How far away should I be from the x-ray machine and the cathode of the uh, x-ray machine? And basically, if you get beyond six feet away, you can, from the emitter, you can, you can reduce it down to a very safe level. Big study. Something's on fire. Okay. Uh, so here's our standard X-ray machine. You got to know which end the emitter is coming from. You need to know where you are, and you need to be six feet away. So here is the next data, looking at thyroid cancer in males. Basically, the thyroid incidence in males rises very quickly at about 45 years old. And it's going to peak at about 55, 59, and then begin to drop down. And this is an important background to looking at that research. So the president of the Scoliosis Research Society came to Montreal and sat beside me in September. And he said that he was hoarse because he had been in Europe. He was dead at Christmas thyroid cancer. Dr. Asher went home and felt on the way, felt his neck and had a lump in his neck and ended up with thyroid cancer, which has been ongoing, not completely cured. He lost his voice with a resection. <clears throat> and he is, um, and the youngest person is 34 years old and as a, a surgeon. So we have, so I decided that we should look at all of the people in the SRS. These were all surgeons who began somewhere in 1966 as a group and had been practicing spine surgery and pediatric surgery and general surgery. So you got to remember they had different exposures to the uh, deal. And there were 620, and almost all of them were male. There's only 24 females. We left them out of the study just because of the small number there. And when we got looking at the numbers of our thyroid cancer, which weren't great, but we realized that we were, that we were starting to pick them up in this age group. And this group was all looked at in 2005 and six, And the way we did this is we used the national uh, cancer studies and the surveillance epidemiology and went all through this. And we had, at that point, three out of a population of 553. If we standardized that, we had an 18-fold increase of thyroid cancer within uh, the surgeons. So, one of the problems with it was well, this was the original study, and we were looking also at thyroid, but other cancers in prostate, colon, and skin. So we looked at all of these, and, and this was our distribution. Now, all of these others hadn't been looked at as far as what their natural history would be at uh, natural incidence. So, in, so we repeated the study because I hadn't asked one of the critical questions, and that was, how many people are going to have cataracts? Because the cataracts should, in a way, follow a parallel. So a whole new study was made. And then when we combined those two studies, we had 733 unique responders, people who had filled out both forms and done the whole thing. And uh, this took a lot of work to get. 
and we had, unfortunately, for one reason or another, the 30% reported cataract is a uh, problem a bit for us. But we started to look at these now with the new, looking at it again. What we found is that we had clearly a higher incidence of melanoma. We had a higher incidence of myeloma. And we had a, a history, and then the thyroid cancer started to creep up. So we moved up to five of those. Here's sort of where the study started to show. The red is sort of what we added to the study when you uh, went through that. And this is the total surveyed, total respondents. And the cataracts, we only had 61 people respond. So it still remains inadequate. But the predicted, the best I can get from ophthalmology is the predicted number would have been 63, and we actually only had 61 who reported cataracts. So I'm, uh, I'm a little hard pressed to give you a real warning about that, but it's certainly in there as a real problem. And only 5% of our respondents ever wore uh, lead glasses. And I'm not sure that that's changed very much. So the real risk at the moment looks to be 23 times higher, 23 times higher risk for thyroid cancer in surgeons from our survey. And so what this tells you is that you want to that the risk is highest in the third and fourth decade, although we have one, one young person. It's probably an accumulated x-ray exposure. We need, still need to do more tests, but here's, here's some advice. Only 40% of 1.5 centimeter lesions are palpable. So if that's true, how are we going to pick this up early? And so ultrasound exam is probably the way to go. Now, if you look at a lot of ultrasounds, you can get lost in a lot of, a lot of scattering, a lot of detail, and a lot of cystic changes. But really, for those of us who are exposed to a lot of x-ray, I think that it's really worth getting this. And whether this is done annually or biannually, or I don't have any idea or any advice to give you exactly. But this is really important. You cannot feel the thyroid cancers until they get to, until they're really of a significant size. So this is um, the other part of the advice, and that is that uh, we ought to wear the lead glasses. We ought to wear the thyroid shields. Thyroid shields are really, really important because a thyroid shield that's only 0.25 millimeters of lead gown will reduce about 90% of radiation to the torso and 90% of the thyroid gland. So it's really worth having that on, and we should have all of your residents. Here was a picture taken when we first put this study together, and Jens very properly wore his. And, uh, and then these are the acknowledgments I have to give to those people who have encouraged the study. This was me wearing mine. So the way to keep it is to have your name on it, because you lose it. And if you lose it, you put on an uncomfortable one, and then it, you'll stop wearing it. So make sure it fits you, it's soft, it has your name on it, and nobody else uses it, and, uh, and it'll work well. This is another risk to life. I just came back from Nepal, and this little guy came out of the wreck in uh, Nepal. Thank you.